Hey Realm Walkers, I am Sarah Desorbus, and I hope you're having a great day today. And if not, if there's someone really shitty in your life, or if you're just having a shitty day, definitely come and hang out, because at least here, you won't have to deal with that. And actually, let's talk about that real quick. If you do have someone who's really shitty in your life, you know, my recommendation for you is to just give them a whole lot less energy. I know that's difficult. Maybe you have to live with them. Maybe you have to work with them or for them. You know, that's that's really bad. But still, like, even in those situations, you can still minimize how much energy you give them. And if things are really bad, just do whatever you can to get out of that situation. And I, I'm rooting for you. Fingers crossed. This is episode 30 of Stranded Among the Realms which is an extreme difficulty playthrough of Nightingale. And I think after this, I'm going to call it for the series, uh, for season one at least. Uh, season two, we'll do that once there is a next, when there, when there is another major patch of the game and there's different systems or different like big changes, that's when we restart this series uh, from scratch. Oh, hey, look, someone just came in. See you later. <laughs> but the reason why I'm doing that is because... I mean, I'd, I'd love to keep playing. But there's another series that I really want to get into. And I need... The time I'm using to create this series, I need that for that series. And that series I'm really, really excited for. It's going to be about Nightingale lore. And I've been, like, scripting and doing all this stuff in the background. Just kind of getting my ducks in a row. And I'm going to, going to try my best to release the first one very, very soon. Anyway, I hope I hope you guys will enjoy watching it. And uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. We actually made it. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. That Chesley Ainsworth. We're going to be doing a lot of talking, by the way. So, um, yep. Hope you're ready. We, we've had eyes on this portal for weeks. I, ha I have, rather, and nothing. For weeks, my heart nearly sprang from my throat seeing it spark to life again. This is my station, appointed to me and me alone. Chesley is the name. Tell me, is it you responsible for this influx of souls here? I didn't know how you did it, but Quatermain will be impressed. Quatermain? Just the man I want to see. And he'll want to see you, too. Straight away. <laughs> Are there proper laboratories here? I'll report to... I will report to Quatermain. Quatermain is in the explorer's chamber upstairs, planning, plotting, strategizing. The door is always open. Show him respect. Oh, oh god, forgive me. I did not see your pocket watch and guidebook before now. I've been wanting to earn mine for some time. They're not, they're not really mine. Ah, I see, yes. Nothing is truly our own. All sense of belonging and rightful possession has been lost with Earth. I see your point. I can only hope to be as wise as you someday. But not what I meant. It was quite literal, but um, there is wisdom in that. Thank you for seeing. Anyways, I shan't keep you longer. Don't deter your meeting with Quatermain. He demands punctuality. And mind his mutt. And welcome to the watch. Probably should have said that first. Many thanks. If you talk to him after uh, talking to Quatermain, he's like a little dejected. Like, gosh, if I wasn't standing here, you jackass, just run past me. It's it's funny. I do like his office. His office is nice. Needs more books? Perhaps? But I can understand. He's a hunter, not a scholar. Hmm, the unmistakable fetter of interrealmic space. You opened a portal here then. A miracle of sorts. Outshone only by the glowing rise. 
It is an honor that I, Alan Quartermain, formally introduce you to The Watch, a place where lost bodies and minds coalesce to form a new bastion for a new era. <laughs> you're, the old, you're the old bastard. Um, no, let's, let's be polite, right? We're, we're guests here. A dignified space, much better than roughing it in the rounds. Hmm. No, I don't agree with that. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, so I don't agree with the second one either. So I think, I think let's go with the third one. Here's the old bastard. Yeah, in the flush. None other, and this is one such occasion where my reputation preceding me is more than is more burden than blessing. It's robbed me of a proper first impression. I must ask what brought you to the watch. We're eager to expand our numbers, but we've not managed to spread word out to the realms yet. Um. Ooh, okay. A lot of talking. Got any news? I'm sorry to say there's been no word yet from the city itself. You think it's fallen? Had the final bastion of Earth been swallowed up, I suspect we would, we all would have a, felt a pang in our hearts. What's more likely is that, in our absence, Lady Lovelace and Madame Curie have made progr progressive strides and fight harder than ever. The question is, how do we communicate with them? How can we reach Nightingale? Desire without planning is like the lightning. It is beautiful, it links the earth to heaven, but it blinds and can kill you if you leave yourself exposed. There are brighter minds helping to formalize plans to open a transept in the city. However, we must first take every variable into account, both scientifically and morally. What's certain is that the plan will require all hands on deck. This makes sense, because the pale flows out of every single teleporter. The fog. Every single transept portal has it. And, yeah, opening it incorrectly, I suppose, could bring in the pale directly into that and go. That could be the phase plan all along. Alright, I'll, I'll wait for further news. Oh, Aurelio, an explorer I met on my travels, sends his regards. Still putting about in his quest for El Dorado, is he? A bit mad at times, that one, but among the finest explorers I've had the chance to mentor. He knows that the past hides secrets covered up beneath the written histories. Aurelio is walking proof that, for some GR canists, the dreaming alone is satisfaction enough. Um, which one is more true? He believes that the realms are a chance to begin anew. I think that's more true. And what do you make of that? Have you an opinion, or do you only tell those that belong to others? Okay, so the choices are I see a future in mankind's civility and the progress of society, which is true. The other is the realms do not deal in pretense, only truth, which is also true. So I'm going to say that perhaps there is merit in both. We, like, one or the other feels restrictive. Playing the fence is a wise way to offend no one and tread no fresh paths. The last thing I'll say about our friend Aurelio is this, it is difficult to convince a man who's seen his own nation torn apart since youth that the world is a place worth saving. I think maybe Aurelio yeah, Aurelio really definitely has a point. I think they both have points. And again, sitting in this center, quote-unquote, isn't a bad choice. Because again, there's you can't shut one person out over the other, right? Uh, so your dog is a ghost? <laughs> I'm not sure what smut is anymore. Ghost? Otherworldly spirit? Dream made manifest? According to the Hermetics, all such things are one and the same. Smut was my childhood pup, and after I lost him, I never thought we'd meet again. I've long since stopped believing in the pearly gates. On one of my journeys through the lost realm of Kor, 
I met a veiled woman who granted me a wish in return for aiding her soldiers. Of course, I balked at the possibility, but as I stood before her, it was as though I died for an instant. Somehow, like a heavy spot of opium, my mind being moved, my being moved into another realm, populated by visions of my fallen family. Only they were completely unaware of my presence, all but smut. Though I never uttered a word, the veiled woman had somehow known my greatest wish, to see my departed loved ones again. By some opaque magic, Smut followed me out of that formless place, good boy that he is. He's been at my side ever since, serving as a reminder that childhood may be fleeting in the flesh, but never in the spirit. I came here after securing a permanent portal to the watch. A permanent portal, you say? Pardon my skepticism, but such a thing hasn't been achieved since the Calamity. On top of that, you're no Realmwalker, no Geo Arcanist, yet you don our pocket watch and guidebook. I think careful honesty is the best thing to do here. Um, we could say the third one, which is still true, but I think this is more, this is better, because at least it informs Quatermain that a phase involved in us getting here. Hopefully the game takes this into account, and if it doesn't, I'm going to be real disappointed. I mean, for future decisions and future plot lines. That's what I mean. A fae, hmm? Perhaps one with a tendency to stick his fingers in human pies? If so, I wonder what his aim is. Be cautious, regardless. We all should. Go on, tell your tale. Ah, da -da -da -da. ah I happened across the dashing mist. They're all the same. They're all the same. We just don't mention her by name for some reason. Nelly, oh, the relief I feel to hear her name. I am not a man of God, but... If divine order ever dwelt in anyone, it is within that woman. What next? I need to know how exactly you opened the portal. Ah, we repaired the damage stabilizer by scavenging arcane materials. Ingenious, I admit. All cochlear technology had its links to the realms. Put through a sieve of mathematics, you, were, you went right to the source. That you stand before me is evidence that the Pioneer spirit courses through you like fire on the river sticks. Um, Melody's to thank. Not I. She did literally 99% of the work. Congratulations, you've made it to the watch. Quick travel is now available. I say you've earned those tools of the trade, so let my word be bought. As the explorers first, I hereby designate you an official realm walker and a welcomed member of the royal Cosmographical and Geo Arcane Society. Hooray, we have left the beginning game and are now into the mid game. Huzzah! 30 hours in. I have synchronized your pocket watch to the watch's frequency so that you may come and go as you please. This should enable you to come here from anywhere in the realms and then return to your state when you take your leave. That's a, that's a great honor. Conservative less than honor and more responsibility. Ah, thanks. More work. Finally, as you leave your sophomore days behind, you ought to arrange a tool set tailored to your needs. Tell me, when you're out in the field, do you prefer reliable utilitarian equipment, or are you willing to sacrifice efficiency in favor of magical adaptation? I prefer magic. Magic, please. Now, making this choice doesn't lock you between one or the other. Um, you can still get rugged by spending 100 um, tier 3 to buy the workbench again. I know it's weird, and it's weird the way they did this, but for now, it's probably a placeholder. But yes, you can still have get both. You just have to spend the money, no matter what. I think what they should do is give you a voucher so you spend half as much to unlock the other half. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, let's continue. Then these schematics will please you. They are favored by one of our finest explorers, 
the intrepid Annie Smith Peck. I expect you'll put them to good use. All right, all right. Too much talk and my tongue tires. Worse, I can see you're preparing to utter a thank you from the awkward movements of your throat. There's nothing I hate more than being on the receiving end of a hat tip. You must be yearning to celebrate, rightly so, I should say. All I ask is that, once you tire of the gaieties, you return so that we may properly discuss this perpetual connection you which established to the watch. There's, let's just keep going. A healthy dose of hedonism could do you good, Realmwalker, but I'll indulge your diligence. Now is working time. Playing time is later. Our commitment to the watch is paramount, but so is my responsibility to you when you're training. Thus, I propose we cross two hurdles with one leap and incorporate some counsel into this discussion. As realm walkers, it is our duty to uncover the realm's enigmas, and, in doing so, light the beacon that guides humanity's path forward. At present, however, we must find our way back to Earth, to Nightingale. The Watch shall serve as both asylum and meeting grounds, a temporary home where the factions can gather and plot how we might fend off from the Pale. The perpetual connection you form between that desert and the watch will supply us a straight channel for recruitment, but where our safety is concerned, I fear it may have jeopardized our situation. Okay, we got some questions to ask first. Um, has the watch always been a human sanctuary? We don't know much beyond what we can gather from the architecture and remaining paraphernalia. Long ago, it served as a robust observatory for the Court of Imperium. So this is the third, I think we've run across four courts now, summer, winter, Empyrean, and the fourth one is escaping me. I just, I think we've run across one. I, I don't remember what the name is, sorry. Aside from being situated atop a mountain and thus nearer to the skies, if we can call them as such, we don't know why they chose this location for what we presume was an essential edifice. It bears an... Beers? It bears an almost uncanny similarity to our own Astrarium in Nightingale, and the hope is that this coincidence goes beyond aesthetics. Hmm. So they might be linked, is that what you're saying? We'll repurpose the space so as to make do. We will? We've... Hmm. We'll repurpose the space so as to make do but the obnoxious grandiose quality is a little tougher to iron out. Are you the leader of the watch? Some will see it that way, it was I who knew its whereabouts and suggested it as a safe haven, but I do not run it alone, nor from a place of authority. Titles and claims of authority I've learned only lead to resentment and revolt. I'm wary of we wearing any sort of crowd. How did you arrive in the watch? Before the Calamity, I was working in league with the Calcularia in Nightingale. We were trying to find a way to lead the Lost back to the city. When it became clear it was too late, we had no choice but to shut down the portal network. Knowing those in the realms would need help finding their way back, Nelly and I jumped through a portal with the goal of communing with the Watch. Evidently, we got separated. I made it to the watch first and have since been searching for Nelly. I screwed up that sentence, I'm real sorry. Okay, so how have we compromised the watch's safety? Reaching the top of this mountain is no easy feat, even for the most tenacious of creatures. That's why we can sleep soundly without fear of a pesky bound or a rabid le leparidon looking for a midnight snack. If a threat were to breach us from inside, however, there's little we could do to fend it off, and it comes as no surprise that the Fae who erected these walls left their fair share of tricky gifts for us to unwrap. Underneath the Grand Hall, we found three portals steering into esoteric vault, vault depths. To our dismay, they are, they are no ordinary vaults, but ones that serve as corral for savage apex creatures. They have been contained so far, but up until now, we have been severed from the portal network. With a new connection forged, there's a chance that creatures may sense an opportunity to escape. 
Am I supposed to know what a vault is? Curious that you've reached this far into the realms without crossing them. Vaults are a perilous field rigged with intellectual and physical challenges, who believe they may have been created by a fae as some sort of trial or perhaps a twisted source of amusement. Like a zoo. He doesn't say that. I say that. I think. I think vaults are zoos. Anyways. Not all vaults are the same, however. The ones in the watch are what we've taken to call apex vaults. Although distinct in structure, they all demand the same final challenge, to slay an apex foe. Are these creatures intelligent enough to plan an escape? Is animal instinct not intelligence in itself? Every wild beast yearns for freedom, and these creatures are no exception. Furthermore, I must warn you that there are, have been reports of unexpected behavior. Something has shifted in these beasts' nature since my first arrival. They've been acting with unusual volition, not expected with these brutes. There's something you're not telling. Our only concern is to keep the apex creatures contained inside the vault. Let the behaviorists sincere entertain themselves in the oddities of bestial psyche. Can't I make a deal with the creatures? Oh, of course. Foolish of me to forget your first mentor was none other than our darling Nelly. I deeply admire her commitment to preserving wildlife, and if we had the alternative, I would encourage such an approach. However, it is utterly pointless to attempt this feat in a vault. These creatures know nothing other than captivity and violence. The only peace you can offer them is the momentary silence of death. I got other questions. You want me to defeat these creatures? In a sense, yes, but I regret to tell you it won't be that simple. These beasts can be temporarily overpowered, but there is no way to permanently vanquish them. Each time you trespass into the layers, you'll have the chance to destroy an interim body, but you'll never claim their souls. After each bloodshed, they'll return just as vile as before. I won't lie, this Sisyphean task might wear down at your resolve, but it is our only chance to slow down the beast's advances and prevent upheaval to our base. I definitely can't do this on my own. <laughs> you won't have to. As we confront the end times, many will pray for a savior, but take it from me, a former card-carrying individualistic bastard, that the only hope for more tomorrows is stepping into the vast night ahead, hand in hand. Quad remains quite the progressive. Yours is not the heroic tale of a martyr, my friend, but you are one of many brave realmwalkers who will fight for our future, and the Watch is here to support each and every one of you. <clears throat> Sorry, needed to take a drink there. Will you go with me? Oh, come now, I hardly think you need someone to hold your hand out there. I admit, my skin tingles at the thought of losing myself in the throes of the wilds. But those were different times, and I, a different man. No, I am right where I'm supposed to be. What if I don't want to be one of these brave realm mockers? Don't be asinine with me. We've all been made realm mockers by circumstance. However, I see in you what I saw in myself many years gone. Something I've seen in your spirit. A connection with the Universal Mother. If the time comes where you hope to abandon your post and solitude calls you, then make yourself a little shack in the woods and live out, live out whatever fantasy you like. I'm an old eccentric with neither the time nor patience for judgment. How can the watch support me? Many wanderers have found solace inside these walls, and I've yet to find one whose talents cannot aid our cause. Before you turn your attention to the vaults, I ask that you introduce yourself to a number of potential allies. First, you'll meet a trader by the name of Barnabas Dent. He may not look like much, but Mr. Dent is responsible for arranging the trading routes that have kept us clothed and fed. I have no doubt he can point you towards the equipment you'll need for your days to come. Then you'll seek Peter Smith Jones, editor in chief of the infamous Sunday Coolier. I'm no patron of his work, but the bastard can smell secrets like a starving hound. If you can endure the stench of tainted wealth, He's a better ally than an enemy.
Finally, when you're properly equipped for the vaults, you should talk to Shiv Pearson. Miss Pearson is a fellow explorer who has graciously volunteered to keep watch of the portal, vault portals. She'll keep you... She'll give you the proper advice you'll require to succeed at the excursion. Uh, traitor, shouldn't the watch apply before free? I'm not interested in asking that question. Um, I don't think Nelly would approve of your partnership with the Sunday Courier. I, I agree with this one. So let's ask it. Or let's say it. I see Nelly has left quite an impression on you. Something you and I have in common, of course. Jones's methods might offend Nellie's journalistic integrity, but she's no clue clueless idealist, mind you. She knows better than anyone that information is power. I'm not asking you to befriend the man or buy his nasty papers. I merely suggest that loosening his tongue could prove of, of value to you. Uh, what can you tell me about Shiv Pearson? <laughs> While I failed... Why... While I fail to see why you'd need a preamble to mingle with your peers, I can spare a few words about our, about our esteemed vault sentinel. For what she lacks in social grace, Miss Pearson makes up tenfold in drive and selflessness. Despite what her threatening facade might impart, you'll find no better comrade in your time of need. I'll say, however, that she has no patience for the haughty and the sycophant. Candor and a dash of boldness are the key to staying in her good graces. Alright, I'll see what they can offer me. And off you go. There is much to explore, and time waits for none. As our... Oop. As our edict. Uh, sorry. I hit next a little too quickly there. Okay, Barnabas Dent. Barnabas Dent. Where was he again? It's gotta be downstairs. There he is, BD. Greetings, my fine GORK initiate. Finding yourself in excess of essence and in need of goods or services? I, Barnabas Dent of the acclaimed Denton Daughters, am standing ever ready to acquiesce. You're part of the NTTC, I take it? Why, I most certainly am. They're endlessly supportive of the budding business person, you see. The NTTC, NTTC backing keeps the goods coming, and for a decently reasonably reasonable share of the profit. Are these are all these other merchants NTTC as well? Now, not every salesman on God's green earth is a member of the NTTC, though. Should my computers wish to join upon our return to Earth, I would heartily advise it. Most of these good people were laborers, tailors, skilled craft people and the like. Thrust from their homes, yet nothing, so and so I've taught them the businessman's art. Man, I keep screwing this one up. We aren't all fit to be brandishing muskets and frolicking through these treacherous lands. Um I suppose we all need a pastime. A pastime, nay, a livelihood. Even at the end of days, the need to support oneself financially is no less imperative. How... Yeah, the network is down. How do they supply you? Of course, I was referring to the agreement prior to the destruction of all things, my good fellow. But I still have quite a bit of my stock left to sell, and a real man of business knows how to barter in a desperate pinch. We've already taken a step that way, and with, but with the loss of earthly currencies for essence... Perhaps I trade a simple bolt of cloth for a basket of eggs and sell each egg for a few essence each. Suddenly I have more value in hand than the cloth was worth to begin with. That tidy profit then buys me even finer stock. Interesting. Why the name Dent and Daughters? It's the Dent family business, of course. I started this lovely establishment with my two darling daughters. Amelia was always gifted in mathematics, took to the company's teachings right away, and everyone who met her knew just what a bright future lay ahead. And Josie, eccentric, ever since she, and Josie, eccentric, ever since she was young, 
brilliant in the kitchen, the garden, and eventually the chemists. This is really poorly formatted. That sentence? Anyways. It was the two of them who really put us on the map. Rejuvenating mushroom oil for the aging gentleman. Josie's own formula. Amelia kept her books and I plastered the town with the brightest flyers money could buy. Where are they now? Well, I have a rather smart daguerreotype here of the both of them. I've had it taken with our first real signage for posterity, I suppose. With that, I've taken one before... Well, it hasn't left these pockets for some three years now. My condolences. Ah, but there's no need. They've a fine legacy here with their father. That's quite the charming story. We make the, quite the charming trio, I must say. But the story isn't over yet. Dent and Daughters has a long road ahead. You've yet to open our flagship location, after all. I won't rush it, though. My girls, des my girls deserve the best, and they'll have it. That's really good. At least we get some story about why this guy is a capitalist. But, you know, as long as he doesn't exploit people, we should be okay with him. Um, I was told to see you about stuff. Ah, uh, Mr. Quatermain. Let's try that again. Ah, uh, with... Ah, uh, Mr. Quatermain knows exactly who we can rely on down here. I, of course, would be happy to supply the whole of the explorers with arms of the highest quality were my establishment up and running. Then you cannot actually supply me? I can certainly help to supply you. While I myself are not yet open for business, there are many fine folk here who, with my help, have established quite lucrative businesses of their own. Whatever you might seek, I assure you it can be found with one of these excellent proprietors. Ah, uh, okay, I'll take a look. Of course, don't forget about Dent and Daughters while you browse. For an eager visitor, might I provide a sample of our unparalleled merchandise ahead of the crowds. There will be plenty more available for purchase once our doors are open. Okay, that's all for now. Do come again, the field of commerce is ever expanding, after all. Yes, yes indeed. Can you put on the coat now? The striking pea coat. We're looking quite dapper there. Almost, almost priestly. I dig it, I dig it. Okay, Peter Smith Jones. Uh, is that him? PS? Or would that be PSJ? Hello. Oh, there. I don't suppose you have a free moment to regale me of the goings on out in these fair realms, newcomer. You're quite a bit fresher than most in this stuffy old tower, and I'd wager you've now a better understanding of the outside world than we. I have some stories to tell if it helps. Splendid, of course, before we get ahead of ourselves. Introductions are in order. Peter Smith Jones is the name, editor in chief of Lanigale's finest paper, The Sunday Courier. Where shall we start? Ah, uh, I believe I've met one of your colonists, Wilhelmina Sass. Wilhelmina is alive? Ah, but of course she is. That scamp could push back a, the pale itself with a few pointed words and sheer force of will. Thank you for telling me, Real Walker. I've heard my share of news since I arrived, but this is second to none. Where's my old heart, even if the rotten buggers after my job? Ha! She certainly has the entrepreneurial spirit. That's a kind way to put it. Wilhelmina is a top-notch journalist, the best in my employ. But when she looks at the world, her view ends in only a few, her view ends only a few feet beyond herself. Wow, that's a, um, that's a scathing opinion of her of his best. That's his best. With a few more years under her belt, she'll learn to see the whole of things and grasp the service 
our paper really provides. It might even soften that mean streak a touch. What were you hoping to ask me? Ah, let's get right to it then. There's much I and the good people of the watch wish to know. Tell me of your journey here. Hmm. How about I walk the ancient ritual sites of the Red Cross Knights? Yes, yes, just the sort of fantastical madness these explorers are always going on about. And did you meet anyone interesting along the way? Hmm. I learned to trade. Or how about this? Ooh, this one's more this one's more scathing, but do we is this something we tell him? I don't know about telling him about Puck. I feel like that should absolutely be a secret. So how about we do I learned to trade. I think this is more boring. Nope, nope, I guess not. Ha! Now there's no need to embellish with any such fancies. I don't suppose you were witness to any human interactions of note. Clandestine meetings between, say, a giant and a household name. <laughs> He's talking about... Because he, he, he has a... Um, uh, what do you call that? A Kind of like the Inquirer. It's that kind of paper. It's um, scandalous. He's looking for... You know sex and blood and things like that so I can't say anyone I met was engaged in that sort of thing now that is a shame the Sunday Courier publishes news of a certain style and spinning these fantastical odysseys into the sort of story my readers expect well perhaps I've not got the eye for for it that I once did you need the tenacity of youth to keep up with these changing times I'd wager a man of my years ought to be lazing about by the sea, rod in hand, not a care in the world. There's plenty of fishing to be done in the realms. Would that I could indulge in it, I'd be a happy man. It seems retirement will have to wait until the world is thoroughly finished ending. My apologies for any time wasted. Of course, if there's anything you'd like to ask me, the floor is yours. Have you any news to share? I may yet. What sort of news are you looking for? Uh, developments around the watch? That newly stabilized portal is the biggest event to happen here since I arrived. It's caused quite the shakeup, and I expect things around here are only going to keep changing. Any word on Nightingale City? Nothing yet, I'm afraid, but rest assured I'll be the first to know when the telegrams start arriving. Let's stop talking to him. I don't think... He has much to say. Um, not everyone speaks highly of the Sunday Courier. I think the news, the news portion of his dialogue will update when we pass certain story markers, if that makes sense. So there's no point to asking him those news because we've just met him. Anyways, let's let's keep going. Oh, and don't I know it? The Courier's been a device of work for longer than I've been her editor. What most critics of the evening wheezes <laughs> fail to recognize is the value, nay, necessity, of levity. Certainly in times of these, such as these, it's ever more vital that we find escape in the simple intrigues of each other's lives. Not every piece of journalism need expose us to the fresh horrors of our world and the realms beyond. See, he has a point, but... Um... He's posing as news, as opposed to, think of him as Fox News, right? Think of Peter Smith Jones as Fox News. He's doing it for views. He's saying things for views, even if he doesn't actually believe it, doesn't care. His excuse might be levity of, of a different viewpoint just to have it, but no, no, of course not. This might be a kinder version of Fox News, but you know what I mean. Um, I think providing is, well, see, this isn't true because you can have fiction. I think the arguments here are all incorrect. Like, posing as um, legitimate is the danger, not the providing the escape part, right? 
So if that's an incorrect argument. I suppose there's, va there's value in both approaches? Yes, but not the deception part of him being, of him presenting as a newspaper. So I'll just reply with, I prefer, I much prefer lighter reading. Then perhaps you'll find a copy of my fine paper on your stoop when the presses resume. Those like Miss Bly will continue their dismal articles in politics and strife, and when the people grow weary of the en endless injustice, the Sunday courier will be waiting, lured a fair and scandalous row in hand to restore their spirits. Alright, let's get to the, the meat. Quatermain mentioned you may have information. Did he now? Frankly, I'm surprised he deigned to mention me with his new recruits. What did he say exactly? These are all true. We could say, let's, let's say it truthfully, he implied that you were a well-connected gossip monger. Ah, now that sounds like old Quatermain. <laughs> he would of course be right to say so. If the watch's happenings are of an interest, then none, there's none more well acquainted than I. I really would have preferred that he was a spy master, and not a gossip columnist, but that's just me. Um, just for narrative's sake, I feel like that's a more compelling person than this, but I do understand why this character is here, and it's again, so that we can reflect on misinformation. Um, okay, we're done. We're done talking to him. Excuse me. Now we talk to Shiv, who is downstairs. Well, who's this I see, chest inflated with all the vainglory of a cochlear and know-it-all? If it weren't for that pocket witch and guidebook, I'd send you right back up those stairs. Um... I'm a realm walker, not a cochlearian. I suppose time will tell. Oh, don't go turning those breaches into gas pipes, it was only a jape. My, if that's enough to send you reeling, you'll never survive these vaults. Shiv is the name. Sentinel of these vaults. How might I help you? What does being a vault sentinel entail? Rigorous retention, sleepless nights, a sharp blade. I'm the first line of defense against ne'er do wells entering those portals, and the last line if anything comes through. Most days I have nothing but knife tricks to keep me sane. On good days I get to threaten the hermetic who thinks they can slip past me. On great days I kill a few bound before they can make it to those stairs. Right on. How did you get the name Shiv? Uh, sh come on, dude. This isn't obvious. Heh. If you have to ask, then you're lucky. Quatermain suggested I speak with you. Rightfully so. Nothing gets in or out of these vaults without my notice. He mentioned you might have some advice for me. Might? Best that you leave me the disparagements to me. Listen, as much as I love a good give and take, these vaults are, be are to be taken seriously. If you're going to help defend the watch, you deserve to know what you're up against. Go on. I sense he left out a pivotal detail, and I'm not about to send you in there without the full story. Through those portals fly dangerous dungeons filled with fey traps and tricks. Old Pei used to use these to test their own abilities, so don't be thinking this will be easy. You'll need to use both wit and brawn to make it through, and the final battle will be a brutal one. Okay, so what what can I expect? I suppose I bleh, I assume you're familiar with Bastilles. Picture those, but tenfold the tenfold the bound for good measure. Oh joy! Bolts used to be a lot simpler before those glorified mummies started cropping up. Old Pay sure didn't need to deal with them. What happened to those old Pay? Dead. Would be forgotten if not for those bolts. Okay, let me know more. What of those interim bodies Quatermain mentioned? Ah, so he told you that much, did he? 
but I don't suppose he mentioned Kiana. Well, I read about it, I think. But no, he didn't. So the old man's still scared. I suspected as much. See, Janna is the pivotal detail. Janna is a powerful and unkillable spirit. He passes from beast to beast, bringing his siege and destruction everywhere he goes. That means these Apex creatures aren't just your regular Apexes. They are Janna incarnate, and that is no small matter. See, she thinks... Wait, no. Let's keep on. I was going to give my opinion on her thoughts, but we'll, we'll just keep going for now. If Janna reaches the watch, we're all done for. So we need to have killed every time he reappears. He's there now. Will you face him? I'll go where I'm needed. Then go. If you fail, I'll be ready. I'm not going to let you all down. What are vaults? They have stuff. Go fight. Okay, so let's go look at the vaults. We're not actually going to go in any of the vaults because we are not ready. Yeah, looks cool, huh? Here, let's take a screenshot. Yes, we won't be doing that right this moment, because we know we do not have the equipment for that or anything. We still have all of our stuff from our last excursion, and we need to go back home and take care of it. Um, we could also look at all the stuff, I suppose, while we're here. We can look at the essence traders. Just to see what's in the shops. That way we can kind of plan for what we need. As you can see, they're expensive. We're gonna need this card, so we may as well buy this now. Excellent Enchanter's Focus. We should get it. Thank you, Lula. Hello, Armin. What you got? Bunch of potions, some ritual meat. Um. Okay, moving on. We'll get the potions later. I mean, we'll have to get all of it later. Oh, hey, nice outfit, friend. Oh, he's got the clothes. I think we're going to be going for. Druidic? I, I just like the look better. Okay, moving next. Tools. Ooh, mystic tools. They're expensive. And Dauntless Tools, also expensive. Yep, we got a lot to buy. And there's even more to buy once we get into um, Ascended Astrolabe, or Ascended Antiquarian. Ah, okay, let's go home. Oops, that's the wrong menu. Let's go home. Well, we are back home. And all of our lovely cannabis, I mean hemp plants. I'm sure they smell lovely. Let's put away all of our stuff. Yeah, Palestinic over here. Where's our mist berry? 
I can go there. Put gem powder in here. Let's swap out her uh, shirt or jacket, I mean. So, as you notice there, that she got more health. Like, so people ask if equipment on their companions work or don't work. They work. They don't. Like, she's, she's ranked up to you, whatever you are. That's what her gear score is going to be. But the bonuses on your clothes, on their clothes, will apply for her. So she has better stamina regen. She has better. She has more stamina or max stamina. She has max health and fire resist. Like all of these help. Like the attributes all help. So always keep them equipped as much as you can, because it's not useless. It definitely helps. Okay, what do we want to do? We could probably tear this one apart, right? Let's, let's extract it. We don't need it. Ooh, we can give her the boots too, because we don't we don't want the boots. We've got better boots. Oh, we're clipping through her. That looks terrible. Terrible. Okay. So we can do a couple of things. And I suppose we could go into a Anifex vault. We could see what's going on there. Um... It's going to be hard, though. But we probably can't do it alone. We should probably bring the smooth bore. Potions can we use? Oops. Grandal blessings could work. I don't know. I say we can just go in there and see what happens. Um, again, it will probably be really difficult. We probably won't get anywhere. Ooh, we should bring some some bearings with us. Some magical ones. We only have four lightning marbles. Okay. Well. That's no good. Poison cartridges. Grab that. Okay, so if we're not going to... If we're not gonna... No, let's, let's just bring the bow. Let's just bring the bow. That, it can't hurt, right? We'll need this for automaton. We'll need this for bound. 
this what we need? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We won't need the torch, so we can swap that out for something else. Uh... Slight purifying? Sure. We've got food. Oh, we need, we're gonna need more uh, healing potions. Maybe more than that. We'll probably fail unless there's someone already there. So, um, anything else we need to do? Climbing picks here. Although, no, we need this for spell casting. Because this has recovery. Illumination, track legend. Oh, that's right. Our sickle has someone swarm. Let's see if we can put someone swarm in this one. We've got a quake, really? We must have just gotten it. See, the problem is, if we put someone swarm on this, we have to, like, switch. Okay, let's just, I think we just go, we go, we go and see if we can do a vault. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, it's pretty out here. Hello, Mr. Ainsworth. Hello, Miss Pearson. Negative lights. You gonna go in there? Uh, let's see, which one do we want to go into? Let's go in this one. This one looks um, harder. I don't know if there are any other players in here. And if there aren't, then I don't think we can beat this. But we'll see. We'll see. Coal and wood. I think we are doomed. 
because we don't have enough stuff. We need to go out into the, um... Ouch. Why are there rings down there too? in some sort of dead zone. Oh, I have no food. I can't use to die because um that was dumb. That was really stupid that I uh, completely neglected to eat food. Oh, that was not a stamina potion, that was a run potion. Here, come here. I'm glad that this spot here is a blind spot. Otherwise we'd be so dead. We'd be so super dead. Wait, come back. You can play again. Okay, we were lucky that we found this here. Um, nice. Don't you know where we are? No freaking clue. Question is, do these things uh, regen?
Where's the doggy? <laughs> Was annoying. Like, do the wolves have to be here? It's like there's already enough stuff to deal with. Um, we definitely want those ones so we can get the uh, cartridges and stuff. Let's have this in the, on the ready. <laughs> Do we need to hit this? Do we have to fight a bunch of stuff? Is that what's going to happen? Man. Really? Okay. Okay. We are really ill equipped for this. Oh no, it's one of those guys. Don't need to do this, but I want but rather huh? How do you get down here? We might die here. Jeez, ow. How the fuck are you all here? Right on my ass. Dude, ow, man. Come on. Tender does so bad. Finally. Oh, this is chaotic. God, you know, fuck off. Fuck. We're definitely not going to be able to kill the Apex creature. We're having problems with just these bound. 
Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, we need better spells. We need better equipments. We need better everything, uh, to be perfectly honest. And to be fair, we need someone in here that is more geared. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. We need someone more geared in here. Wait, are there more? There's more. Really? Fuck off, dude. Look up, mall guy. I mean, we are. We're decently geared, don't get me wrong. Um, but these confines do not help us. This is supposed to be done by parties of people. Let's see if we can kite them around. Um, why why is my stuff not coming up? Weapon? Weapon? Okay. It's there, I just can't see it. Oh no. Oh, why are we going so fast? I don't understand what's happening right now. I think I'm bugged. Because you see my stamina is not recharging. Okay, let's... Let's get out of here. Oh, you know what? I think... Network. It's gotta be network. Okay. Because... That's not working. Network error. Okay, so that was quite an ordeal. <laughs> it was a network error after network error crashing and all that stuff, and it was just like, okay, I'm done. Just done. <laughs> done. I had to wait about 15 minutes before I could log back in. And finally, I was just like, okay, let's just end for now, because there's no point in going back down there. We, we can't really handle that dungeon quite yet. We need friends with us. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do that at some point, probably with a different character, but, you know, otherwise this season is over, I would say. Uh, like I said earlier in the beginning of this episode, I want to focus on the Nightingale lore series, which is coming up, and I'll try and release those once a week, hopefully starting soon. We shall see. I'll try my best. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode in the series as it was. And uh, we'll have a new series once there's a big content update and see how things have changed. Otherwise, I'll catch you all later, alright? Peace.